Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining today's Korean Diaspora Talk event. My name is Taewoon Baek, Director of the Center of Korean Studies, and also Professor of Law at the William S. Richardson School of Law at the University of Hawaii. As you know, the Center of Korean Studies has recently published an e-book Bungminbo, Korean National Herald E Collection, as part of the Strategic Research Institute uh, of Korean Studies project. The Bungminbo, Korean National Herald 1908 to 1968, which uh, it, uh, occupies a very important page in the history of Korean immigrants to the United States. The Center for Korean State uh, Studies, as you know, has an extensive Korean immigration related data and collections that provides an important foundation for Korean immigration uh, research and diaspora studies. Thanks to the support from various sectors, including the Academy of Korean Studies that sponsors the Strategic Research Institute project, we were able to continue uh, Korean immigration history research project during various uh, outcomes. The digital collection of Bungmin Bo is one of the important outcomes and this collection uh, published in the form of ebook is a compilation of the digital images and scanned pages of the Shinangupo and Gungminbo that the center uh, possesses or other data uh, researchers collected through various channels. KBFD TV recently uh, produced and aired uh, two documentaries in cooperation with the Center for Korean Studies in creating. Documentary puzzle and the story of a dream picture prize showcase Korean uh, immigrants and their efforts that they have exerted in Hawaii. This event will discuss the background of the projects the film work itself, and also historical aspects of Korean immigration study in Hawaii. This event is uh, one of the two events that starts today, and the second event will be continuing tomorrow at 2 o'clock uh, with the director and producer Jin Young Lee Won uh, at 2 p.m. via Zoom. Please also come to join that event as well. This event is sponsored and uh, hosted by the Center for Korean Studies uh, in this auditorium. And uh, I would like to uh, start uh, by just thanking uh, the staff who had vigorously worked to make this event possible. Uh, my staff, including Mercy Rabugwin, Courtney Oshirochin, Amin Kim, Mark Swan, and the uh, visiting scholar. Yeah, the on had worked very hard to make this event possible. We have uh, two guests uh, today from KBFD TV, and uh, uh, we also have uh, uh, as our panelist, uh, this is Dr. Lee Brabayash, the president of Korean Immigration Research Institute in Hawaii. On my left, uh, we have President Jack Jong of ABFD. And uh, next to him, we have uh, a producer, Mr. Jong Tae Lee, also from ABFD. And on my right, uh, we have uh, Mrs. Dr. Lee Murabayashi. Thank you very much for joining. I hope we will uh, have a chance to uh, appreciate a little bit of the two documentary films today, and also uh, like to think about the implication of the uh, appearance on Korean immigration study as well as on Korean society in Hawaii. 
this event uh, is in part uh, supported by Korean uh, Academy of Korean Studies, and also uh, it, it has been helped by the Ministry of Patriots and Veterans Affairs of Korea, Independence Hall of Korea, Hamilton Library, and other many other people. I would like to express our sincere gratitude to everybody who made this possible. Without further ado, I think we may start our discussion. As a starter, I would like to ask uh, to all of you to watch the trailers of the two video film first. Hawaii韩人社会的，呃，소식을나누고또이세계와이제하와이韩人들을잇는어떤그창의역할을했다고생각합니다국민보가여러곳에소장이돼있었어요그런원본자료들을한곳에모아서완벽하게보존한다는면
if you're right, then Hermania Adilan. And we were retracing her life as a picture bride. Uh, and through Korean language schools, how they educated the next generation Koreans through the language and her uh, opinion on how the movement and culture is expanding into the mainstream society. So back in uh, last year in 2021, we produced two documentaries. First was titled Puzzle, a project of Center for Queen Studies efforts to aggregate all 60 years of publication of Kumbo, the first language Korean newspaper also known as Korean National Herald. And two part documentary, The Story of Dreams, which included Picture Bride and Desert Farmer. Part one, The Story of Dream, Picture Bride, featured descendants of Picture Brides in Hawaii as they tell their stories to their parents and grandparents. Talking to President Haki uh, Lee gave us the inspiration as to the hidden stories that we want to tell people so that it may be reported on video format as a documentary. The next step in producing a documentary is whether it's plausible to produce it and what message we want to relay to the viewers through the puzzle. When we heard about the digitalization of the movie, we thought people should know about the importance of this project. As you know, the movie Minari was a hit last year, and we wanted to tell the stories of Koreans in Hawaii where the first immigrants landed in this documentary, the story of dreams, picture of ride, in a form of a documentary version of Minari. Thank you very much. So before proceeding, I think I need to do one thing. I forgot to award the ladies that is in front of me, so I will just award it to participants. Thank you very much. So uh, let me ask the second question, which will go to our producer Lee. The title of the two video films seems to be very interesting. The first one, puzzle, and the second one, the story of uh, the, the story of dream, uh, picture bride. Probably the uh, director had been thinking about uh, the that's the title why producing the films. And maybe there's some hidden story. So would you please tell us uh, how you came up with the titles of the documentary films? Umibo documentary puzzle at the moment, I got big hundred of the pedal to the animal. Independent movement activist and a brave immigrant 
with beautiful dreams. That is why I named the documentary as Story of Dreams, Picture Prize. I understand uh, the second uh, documentary film received some a prize from Korea. Can you explain what is the name of the prize? Um, both documentaries are produced and were done jointly co-produced with a production and television team in Korea. It was broadcasted in Korea, Hawaii, and uh, mainland U.S. via satellite, and garnered much interest and awareness. We found that the production aspect of documentary puzzle was very interesting. With Google, the Korean media showed a lot of interest as a KBFD and CKS. Uh, we have a good show. Yes, yes, yes. Our production team followed President Park Hee Lee, uh, Director Beck, as they were in Korea visiting many government agencies, working on getting publications together for digitalization. Um, their effort made news in Korea. The documentary of the story of Dream Picture Bride was submitted to the KCA in 2021 International Joint Production Contest and won top honor. We want to thank the production team, staff, and all of our partners who helped make this possible. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, what is the name of the prize that you received from Korea? How will you the same table in your field? 한국국립공원에서 대한민국 국립공원에서 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 Direct my question to Mrs. Uh, Brabayasi. Uh, actually, we visited, uh, no, that I will start this one first. So, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to ask you uh, why you uh, need to participate in uh, this project and what is the meaning and value of this project? Actually, the day before we left, uh, and, uh, 
that because we had to travel many different places, it was a very long ride in order to get a tax credit. So it wasn't a pleasant, pleasant uh, trip. And because of the restrictions, we couldn't even eat the Korean cuisine. That was one of the difficulties. Okay. Uh, my next question is directed to again, uh, Mr. Chan. So, what and how these baby are being prepared for this process? So, as President Takiyogi mentioned, a lot of people really don't understand what goes behind and in preparation to the documentary. I think the best way to explain it is uh, everyone's been to Disneyland with the children. You wait in one hour for the ride, and then it's a one minute ride. Well, in TV production, to do what you know, when you're at home, you're watching a 30 minute show or a 60 minute show, that might be just 30 minutes, 60 minutes to you. But for the production team, it's hundreds and hundreds of hours and a lot of preparation work. Not only do you have a time constraint, but there's research involved. There's serious funding that's involved. And do you have materials to execute this? Do you have the time? Uh, there's just so many things that uh, go into producing a documentary that uh, I can talk for hours about the scripting and, and the manpower, the equipment involved. But the most important matter in, is really funding. And because we have to travel a lot, research, a lot of times uh, we may fall short in funding and that's where the TV station comes in and we invest a balance of that uh, budget for the shortfall and that's our way of investing into uh, this project. This is one of my uh, I know, I, I've seen you, you're so excited faces when you read uh, Equal pages, candid pages, especially some of the pages that we received through the Ministry of Veterans uh, and Veterans Affairs. How do you see the significant meaning of uh, the, 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 the Korean National Health? Um, well, you know, you know, Korean immigration history, but some dates are missing, and we just figure out that it's not there. For instance, uh, about the March 1st movement, two years ago when I wrote a paper on the, what happened right after the first March 1st movement in Honolulu, there was no Korean uh, law of it. So I heavily, I mean, I mainly relied on so when we found the 1919 issue, this last year, I mean, I, you cannot, you cannot just imagine the great sources that these people have. So it is a very, very critical to have all these papers put together and made it available to the public and the research. Um, for example, when do we get the news? Now we find the news as one week later or ten days later. We got it on March 9th and happened all those things. And the main thing is March Right after that, they start collecting money to send to Korea. The Gongni Bundongbi, Bung, we are compiling all the names to be donated. It is a very, very critical document to, to, to be used to select the so called patriot. So it is a, Bungibo is very, very important, basic. Uh, data document for our history. And what do you think the historical meaning of uh, 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 revisiting the picture prize is? Well, 
we have the new picture right since 1993 uh we saw when new picture came the young ladies came to marry the old woman, old man and all that sort of thing but it's more than more than that so we find all those things even in even in 1990 newspapers we find the woman start collecting money on march 15 March 15, just you know, five days after they got the news, they start collecting. So, uh, the Korean picture bride is a part and parcel of Korean, Hawaii Korean history. So, we have to learn more about this Korean picture bride. I understand uh, when Korean immigration started in 1903. Super majority of the immigrants were gay, and they didn't could not find uh, their bride. So the only way for them to get married is to import rice from Korea, and but they could not actually travel to the United States at the time because of the Chinese Exclusion Act and immigration restriction. I understand. That's why they first sent pictures to pick up the right. Person or maybe the male sent a picture. I think to rise in Korea. So we we sort of know we have the exchange of taking a big picture. Then here sending one sort of made up picture and then to Korea and the woman said, "Oh, he looks handsome. He's okay." And then she sent the picture. That's how the picture married picture rise. It's not only the picture brides. I mean, we just simply know that because of the picture bride, Koreans had a children coming to their family ways, and the picture bride became a raise of family, educate their children, and at the same time, they contributed to the Korean people's movement. That's all we, we know right now. But actually, uh, if we didn't have about 700 picture brides, the Korean, white Korean history would have been totally different. So we see the stories later on. It's very important Korean history. The one final related question, uh, not final, but not with this. Um, I think those early Korean immigrants and also picture prize are uh, indicate the influx of Korean immigration, but those are kind of early Korean immigrants. So if you compare those early Korean immigrants to uh, recent immigrants, especially uh, current uh, immigrants, especially after 1965, when immigration uh, started, we started again. So what are the differences between those generations of immigration? Of course, the uh, uh, Korea, the uh, mother, so the immigrants from other countries, political and the uh, uh, economical situation is totally different. So we cannot just simply compare uh, early Korean, early immigrants and the recent immigrants. But the similarity is yes, they were hard. Second, they really promote their children. Despite the difficulties they're having in the Korean country. So those two are very common uh, for the early immigrants and the uh, recent uh, 69, 1969. But the big difference is new immigrants don't have to worry about the mother country's uh, struggle to establish an independent nation. So it's a great difference. Thank you. Mr. Zhang Lee, I understand you have worked uh, a much deeper project with the machine uh, from Asia. Have you learned anything new while you are working on Korean immigration to our project? Why, especially making this uh, admin business? 선생님하고 교회가 될 때마다 이렇게 멋사 포인트를 많이 배우고 있고요. 그때마다 선생님한테 좀더 많은 하면서 항상 가끔 할 때마다 느낀 건데 뭐 선생님 멋사 포인트 안에 어려워서 할 때마다 늘 
배우는 작업을 합니다. 이런 작업을 해, 하면서 느낀 거는 1920년대 어, 교회에서 사용되었던 교회 교인 연구가 장자 선생님이 공인 유공자를 찾는 데 중요한 자료를 쓰고 있고 또 당시에 납부했던 공인 유공 자금 중심 하나 하나가 지금은 한인들의 우리 하와이 한인들의 소중한 유산들 이런 걸 봤을 때 1920년대 70년대 이민 사 이민 세대들 이 이제 한세대들의 현재 모습을 잊혀지고 지워지기 전에 그렇게 기록이 안되어 있지 않을까 This I may interpret. I have been working with Mrs. Kajili for several years with a number of her immigration history projects. I'm always learning new things while working with her, especially, I think, documenting historical materials with her important and urgent issue. While working on historical projects, I've seen a church attendance list in the 1920s and is being used to locate national independence movement patriots. I've also seen the receipts of the monthly donations of Korean independence movement. Are considered as important artifacts for Korean, of Korean immigrants in Hawaii. I believe the history of the second wave of immigration in the 60s and 70s should be studied and, and the materials should be documented and preserved before they are completely gone or forgotten. Mr. Murakayashi, do you have any scene, a memorable scene from those two documents that you want to share with us? I can tell two two stories. One was to see the old intertide print machine preserved at the independence wall of the US. I my head just automatically bowed in the sweat of those who you know toil to produce this thing for day after day. A hundred years ago, they used this intertide. The second one, I mean, anybody who visits Korea should go with them as well and try to see what they preserve over there. And the second sort of memorable event was visiting Namgang. That's the Namgang to say the river. When she was 17, 18 years old, 1914, she crossed the river. She, she crossed the river in a rowboat. Right now, there's a big bridge, so cars come back and forth. But 1914, she rode a rowboat to to catch a horse-driven car to go to Masan, where she sent her picture to, to Hawaii to become a teacher boy. I mean, to see that river running through the Jinju, it's, I mean, I, I really admire her, her courage and adventure, the spirit of that person. It has to be. Why uh, producing this film? What was, what was the most difficult uh, part creating this documentary? The one that I was going to talk about was the Corona time. The Corona time was a very difficult time. The Corona time was a very difficult time. The Corona time was a very difficult time. 새로 백 선생님하고 백병 교수님께서 약속을 방문을 하셨다는데 오늘 일정을 잡을 때 코로나 때문에 한 달, 한 개월까지 지연되면서 스케줄이 없잖아요. 한국에 힘들게 방문을 하셨어도 방문하셨기 때문에 상위 한 장의 스태프들을 구성하는 데 있어서 말씀드렸습니다. 이것도 워낙에 그 상태 같은 경우는 서울과 경기도, 대전, 대구, 울산, 이렇게 전국을 이제 다니셨어요. 그 당시 그때만 하더라도 뭐 그냥 한 대로만 이동할 수 있는 그런 건데 그거 하고 그랬기 때문에 여러 대의 시간이 많이어서 이동을 했어야 되기 때문에 이런 것들이 다 예상과 이제 결과들 때문에 
The biggest challenge was the situation that was caused by COVID-19. Because of COVID, the film shooting had been delayed and some of the shootings had to be canceled. We need to have some other scene, uh, we needed to add some of the scenes, but instead uh, we had to compromise. It was also quite challenging with restrictions in place, such as limitation of numbers of our gathering at the film shooting site. And we needed to move down from Seoul to Gyeonggi-do, Daejeon, Daegu, Busan, and so forth. We could have used one car if it was normal time, but because of COVID-19 re regulations, we needed to move in several cars. Quite understandable difficulty, I think. Mr. Chung, uh, what, I'm not sure whether uh, the Center for Korean Studies did uh, its own part uh, in helping you creating this documentary. So uh, how do you speak in uh, your cooperation with us? And uh, what do you see you know, as a future project? Uh when you're producing, well, we produce the subject of Korean immigration and without the support and partnership with the Center for Korean Studies, it would simply not be possible. And the reason is the Center for Korean Studies has tremendous amount of files, archives, and materials that, uh, that you need to source uh, for a program. And typically all those files and reference materials make up about 30 to 40% of the actual program. So without it, we simply just cannot produce it. So our partnership and, and your support is an integral part of making the program. So with this program, what do you want to tell to the future generation? In our busy daily lives, it's really seldom that you self-reflect or look back, but that's what we want to initiate or, or instill with the viewers. We want them to watch this documentary and think about their lives, reflect back, and one, appreciate all of the previous generation's hard work and their foundations, their sacrifices. And at the same time, think about their own lives and see how they can contribute to today's society for future generations. This is me. What do you think about the lessons or implications of those uh, stories of uh, described in Kung Minpo as well as uh, the stories of Victor Bright? So what uh, should learn? Should we learn from those history? Well, uh, let me cover on the picture right first. Recently, many pa papers and books a couple of books and several documents were made on picture bride. But sort of a common theme or common knowledge you get out of this one is, yes, young woman came, married an old man and raised a family. At the same time, they raised a, a financial, uh, they, you know, they made a contribution to the mother country to, to regain in the independence and establish a new country. And one or two picture brides actually left their life story in Hawaii. But particularly picture bride Chan Yan Yi's writing is a very, very important auto, we call it auto ethnographic uh, document. Her life through uh, sort of a Korean community history. She you know, left very uh, detailed uh, writings on that. But more important, we have to, from now on, actually uh, the picture bride uh, document, the second document covered the part of it, but we really have to emphasize that this picture bride laid the foundation for our Korean cuisine culture. Hanshik Muna, they started the Hanshik, they laid the foundation for Hanshik Muna. For instance, they sold gochujang, kimchi, daegu muchim. It's 
carried on the second and third generation immigrant. Uh, they, are, they are doing big business in Hawaii. We haven't covered, you have not covered in the picture right due to the scheduling difficulties and all that. Um, the Robert Cole's mother, her sort of sauce, gochujang sauce and all that, is the basis for Mike Irish to, to do the kimchi business. You know, the, in, when you do the re-edition, actually we have to cover that. And we have not, what you have not covered is a no mix, is one of those uh, picture brides. Children studied a no mix. And all in all, I can just, you know, go and the other thing is, uh, it's not well known story, but Daegu Buchim, when you go Costco and Times Market, all that you see the Daegu Buchim, but look at it carefully. It says Daegu Mix, Daegu Mix, no, Daegu Buchim. It doesn't say card mix. They think Daegu is a Hawaiian word or Daegu is the English word. Because we started using Daegu Muchim, Picture Bride started Daegu Muchim, it became, a, it became Hawaiian food. So it still carries. So we have to cover, we really have to cover this Picture Bride as an entrepreneur or the foundation of a Korean culture in Hawaii as well as in America. That's your next project. So, Mr. Producer Zhang Teli, uh, is there anything that you could have done more? Oh, uh, 전에 이렇게 선생님 말씀하셨던 것처럼 어 uh, 저희가 원래 계획을 했던 것들이 있었는데 코로나로 인해서 좀 촬영이 제약이 되면서 충분히 담지를 못했었어요. 그래서 yeah. 기존에 계획했던 1차 사진 신부에 대한 그 1차 이민 세대들의 이야기를 좀 하고 그 이후에 2차 그 후손들에 대한 이야기를 좀 담고 싶었는데 충분히 담지 못했던 아쉬움이 있습니다. 그래서 기회가 된다면 작년에 제작했던 위대한 유산 사진 신부를 좀 보강해서 제작을 하고 싶습니다. But due to the limitations of COVID-19, he does realize there are a lot more stories and more in-depth coverage that we could have done. But again, there are time constraints and we had to meet broadcast air dates and production, but he would certainly like to uh, relook, revisit and expand uh, on the documents and see if we can uh, add to it and make it a more <laughs> complete picture. So what are your future plans? So next year. Uh, funding, Mars. funding. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> that is most important. but. Uh, it starts with a good idea, and then we go to the funding. But the idea is next year marks the 120th anniversary of Korean immigration, and that's just not to Hawaii, it's the United States. It's, they came to Hawaii. And KBFD, in celebration of this anniversary, we're preparing a special program. Specifically, we'll be focusing on the Korean immigration, and we're tentatively calling the title The Last Mark. And while working with uh, President Takili, we've noticed that the tombstones of Korean immigrants are in such poor condition here and on neighboring islands. Uh, many have fallen over, cracked. You can no longer read the lettering. And it's just so uh, in such poor condition. We'd like to embark on a project where we can restore their tombstones so they may, they may last another several hundred years. And uh, recently, uh, President Takili came across the unknown tomb of independence fighter. We'd like to take that challenge and identify who they are and give them the respect they deserve. Sounds a wonderful project. As a director of this center, uh, we continue to, uh, we hope we will continue to work with you in your future projects. This is very good opportunity for us to learn about the production process of this documentary films and uh, your uh, purpose of this uh, work and also related historical matters. And this is really uh, wonderful to hear uh, all the interesting stories. 
uh, because we don't have a time to watch the actual video. Uh, I, this could be some abrupt question, but I was wondering whether you will make our audience to watch the full video uh, through some uh, streaming uh, measure, even if it is a, a week or some, some limited time. And if you can uh, give us a link to us, uh, we will uh, unload those links on our website so that they can, everybody can watch the actual full film uh, at least for that period of time. President Zhang, can you do that? You know, after the uh, documentaries were broadcast on our channel, I didn't expect the amount of emails response publicly and through emails of how people thoroughly enjoyed the documentary, how they learned so much, because they've always heard about the picture bright stories of Japanese and Filipinos, but they've never heard the Korean picture bright story. And so we were always planning to rebroadcast it on a special day, uh, but certainly we would love to work with you and make something happen. Thank you very much. So uh, now that we have uh, uh, some good number of participants still uh, in this Zoom uh, talk event, I would like to uh, ask uh, the participants to raise your hand if you have any question or any comments to make. Uh, the reason why we chose to use this uh, Zoom link this time, not a webinar, is because we wanted to hear directly from you. So if any of you have uh, uh, any questions to, for our participants, please raise your hand and I will give uh, your chance to uh, ask it directly. Yeah, because your camera is, many of your cameras are turned off, or you might use the raising hand function. If you click more, you may find uh, 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 raising hand function. Anybody want to speak? While we're waiting for a question, if I may uh, add another uh, point that I like to really tell everyone is that I really want to give a, a big applause to President Ducky Lee because production takes you all over the place at all weird times and it it does take a lot of effort and but because of the greater goal and the greater good that we need to do and her life's passion uh, i just wanted to thank her for all of her effort and i just really appreciate her uh, ditto actually i want to second what uh, mr jung just said she was wonderful and she did a, a lot of work and uh, her energy actually continuously you know enabled us to work on this so thank you very much for saying that. Uh, I'm uh, asking participants to uh, ask a question if you have any uh, questions or if you have any comments. And uh, uh, if you have difficulty in finding the raising hand function, it is on the reaction uh, menu. But if you cannot, you can turn on your camera and you can start to ask if you want. Uh, I see. Uh, Professor Ned Schultz's reaction uh, seems to be applauding, not asking question, but no, Professor Schultz, question. do you want to say a word? Yes, yes, I have a question. Thank you. Can you hear me? I hear you, but I do not see your uh, camera. Maybe. Okay, that's all right. Uh, I'm, I'm at home. Anyway. Uh, I, uh, th thank you very much, and I am glad you finally got the sound together. But I was wondering, besides uh, the projects you're talking about right here, if uh, Mrs. Motobayashi or the Center for Korean Studies or KBFT have other plans for 2023. So uh, I'm sorry, but because of the volume setting, I could not hear it clearly. Uh, not that volume, but the room volume. Uh, have you heard what you said? I I'm sorry, Ned. Could you <laughs> please repeat again? what you said? I, we could not hear your voice at just a moment. Next, okay. 
So Ned, I'm sorry, but we could not hear you. Would you please speak up and ask one more time? Okay, sure. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay, okay. Well, first of all, thanks to, to all of you for putting this afternoon program together. Uh, but I want to know uh, individually, do each of you have specific other plans for 2023, the 120th anniversary year for Korean immigration? Yeah, so the question is, uh, uh, Next in next year because it is it will be 120th year of uh, Korean immigration history and asking uh, whether you have any specific project that you can uh, refer to at this time each of you if you have any. Well, I'll turn off my email and the, I, my headphone because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> get all the requests. But uh, actually, right now, I'm in the process of compiling those who contributed so called the Dongnip Undong B and the uh, Korean Lady Women's Relief Society's Gu Hyul Gum. Uh, that happened right after the March 1st movement. So uh, we are compiling it. Uh, it lasted about a year and a half or two years, in addition to all other uh, so-called duties they pay, taxes they pay to the Kungmin and all that. So it'll be a great sort of basic data to help who's who, who contributed what and kind of thing. So that is sort of a one year old project about a year long project. So I'm not really doing it just for the 120th, but I'm just compiling the basic data, immigration data. And from the Center for Korean Studies side, uh, in cooperation with the Korean American uh, Foundation in Hawaii, uh, we are planning to uh, host some event to, to celebrate 120s anniversary of Korean immigration next year. And uh, among others, we are thinking to host a conference here in Center for Korean Studies building, focusing on women's, uh, uh, immigration women's, uh, women's kind of uh, some, we can commemorate, uh, you know, uh, reviewing the 120th years and the stories and their contributions that will be revealed as it is, still in an early stage of uh, uh, actual organization, but it will be happening. And we also work at this time, also with uh, some help from uh, other agencies in town uh, to digitize Korea Times, which is Hawaii uh, Hangu uh, Gilbo. And uh, it, it, this year is actually the 50th anniversary of that uh, public uh, starting of the publication. And we want to make uh, the digitalized image of the Korea Times so that we can share it through uh, our uh, website as well as other uh, methods. So a lot of uh, interesting events are being discussed, I understand. And uh, I understand Professor Schultz uh, is currently president of the uh, profession, uh, one of the profession uh, agency, Korean American Foundation. So uh, we will be happy to work with him as well. Do you have anything to add, uh, add to that? Uh, we are also in the uh, planning stages of what to do next year in lieu of the 120th anniversary. But also, I think our one of our primary role is to help every organization promote that event. And also during the year, we should be documenting that through news or another special program that may come together as a collaboration. But we're also, and I like to say that KBFD is here and we are here to support the community and to promote the culture. So we are here to collaborate with everyone and to promote the event and what we can do in support in our power, we will do our best. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have any other question, uh, participants? Why waiting for questions? Now that we have a president of KBFD TV here, I would like to one unrelated question to you. 
I know we have a lot of kind of popular K drama, and uh, I hear a lot about uh, KBFD drama, uh, even not from Korean community, but uh, other communities as well. So, is K drama? You know, you you feel the popular popular you know K drama, and uh, how do you make it actually uh, accessible here? And uh, do you have any difficulties in getting those dramas? And what I would like to learn, you know, uh, how actually the KBFD is uh, uh, covering those dramas, and how what's your plan uh, with regard to the sharing Korean culture in Hawaii? K-drama, K-pop, K-culture, K-food, you name it, right now, everything with a K is very popular. Um, I attribute that nowadays really more to uh, the K-pop culture with BTS, winning so many American mainstream awards. Then you have K-movies, like Parasite winning the ultimate global trifecta, winning every film festival, and, you know, in the, in, in the most prestigious awards. And that is setting the tone for bringing the culture through media mainstream in the United States. And I've never seen this uh, happen on a national scale, on a global scale, in my 36 years of TV broadcasting. Yes, with dramas in Hawaii, it was very popular. And our channel is the fourth most watched channel in the state of Hawaii. Well, who's watching it? Yes, Koreans, but it's really a lot of the local people who are interested in the culture. And then they go out and have Korean food. They see it on TV. It looks good. They want to learn the language. So it just, it's amazing how this cross-cultural breaking the barrier, taking something that people call ethnic has now become mainstream is a great evolution that I'm just watching happen and it's just the amazing thing that's happening. Considering the population is only 2%, mm -hmm. there is very minor group and culture wise. Yeah, so currently you are running two channels in Hawaii. Actually, we have uh, KBFD, which is our primary channel, and that can be seen even without cable. You can have you know, in my generation, it was called rabbit ears, but now you have digital antennas and you can have HD quality video at home without any cable. And it's free. Uh, then we have our secondary channel, Arirang, which is our K-pop channel. So they complement each other. Uh, and we have another cable channel, KBS America. Mm -hmm. And we have another channel that's a Korean tourist channel, strictly only in hotels, mm -hmm. specifically for Korean tourists. So you're doing great job. Thank you very much. Uh, with the support of the whole community, thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, because I do not see any questions from audience side, uh, I think we might as well have a round of a concluding remark and uh, we'll uh, end this session. So may I ask uh, Mrs. Dakili Murabayashi to, to speak your final words for this event? Uh, not only through this event, but continuing and follow, particularly for the 120th coming year, uh, we really have to uh, sort of respect the first generation of uh, immigrants, particularly the women. Uh, they really did, uh, they really did a great job and laid the foundation of Korean culture, Korean history in Hawaii. And uh, we serve a researcher of Korean immigration history. We still have a lot to do to analyze, to find out how great uh, contribution they made in the, not only Korean history, but also the history in Hawaii. Mr. Jung Tae Lee, do you have any final words? Majimaguru Hambar Sum Hashin Damian? Oh, Majimaguru Hambar Sum Tri Damian. Oh, Nenyone, the Toyka, the Pegish Pinaki, the Messiah, 
다양한 프로그램들을 준비를 하고 있는데요. 이런 것들이 좀 올해 어, 3, 4월 달에 좋은 결실이 맺어서 꼭 선생님하고 같이 제작을 완성을 했으면 좋겠습니다. Uh, if I may to interpret, so, so next year he has a special programming planned, and he would he's looking forward to it, and he would love your support and continued partnership to make that happen. Thank you very much. And uh, President Zhang, would you please also uh, share your concluding remark? Uh, I always look at any celebration anniversaries as a an opportunity where the community can come together, collaborate together uh, as a partnership well, with the greater goal of promoting our culture, respecting our, our previous generations. And uh, I, I think that is the most important and focus part that we should emphasize versus uh, individual agendas, but to see the greater goal. I'd like to thank you again uh, to all of the participants for uh, staying with us today. As we have discussed, these two documentary films actually showcase what we have in Hawaii, but they are not all, they are only small examples that we can uh, work together, think together, and also treasure together. But the Center for Korean Studies wants to continue to work on Korean immigration and diaspora project. And uh, uh, because uh, we have uh, great numbers of uh, friends uh, in, locally in Hawaii as well as uh, outside of, of the world, uh, the Hawaii, uh, we will uh, continue to serve as a hub of those studies. And uh, uh, also uh, as a center director, personally, I will continue to pay attention to the role that we should play, especially with the uh, more than 40 uh, collections of uh, uh, the Korean immigration related uh, materials, we will uh, continue to share those uh, with a, a broader community. Uh, while you are listening to this, uh, please uh, think about also uh, the, uh, what you can do for our community and for the future of Korean American community in the United States. I would like to thank you all, all thank all participants again for joining today's event and also all of the staff who have worked uh, to make this possible. And uh, tomorrow we'll be meeting again as we discussed, uh, uh, director and producer uh, Jin Young Lee Won will be joining at two o'clock tomorrow with her five episodes of her a documentary movie and a lot of interesting talks. Please come again uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much, everyone.